Hello and welcome to this uh, overview of Cityographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of Cityographer. Um, what you see in front of you is our welcome or splash or um, you know welcome menu starting screen. And on it we've got a few options. The first two allow us to create a new city, one in a step-by-step -step process, which we're going to get to in a couple of minutes. Uh, and then first we're going to do the creating a city in one step, and then we can load an existing city or we can update our license. Uh, some of you may note that we're running on a Mac right now. We're actually uh, running on top of Java, so we can run on Macs, Windows, and Linux. With that out of the way, let me go ahead and click create a new city in one step. We'll create a relatively small city of, say, 2,000 people. This is going to be a, a kind of more of a town, relatively small town, maybe. Um, here are some settings that we could do to change the size of the map, the area that we're going to create our, our, our town in. Then we have uh, options for how likely we want to have a harbor, which is more like a coastline, meaning our, our, our city will be along a coast, or a river, and some other options. This bottom section allows us to override the, the default settings in the system as far as the styles of lines that we have for roads and such, text, textures, map items, which are mostly our buildings and, and vegetation maybe, and then our data file of, of generating you know, the likelihood uh, of what building types we'll have, as well as the, the details of those buildings. Uh, these are all pro version features down here, so in the free version these would be grayed out. Um, they also will also have uh, sample files that we use on our website, and you'll be able to customize those or, or create your own. With that out of the way, I'll go ahead and start. So now it's going ahead and creating uh, all the data, setting up all the data that we need, as well as creating the user interface. And then we'll see the, the city evolve right in front of our eyes in, in just a matter of a minute or two. Um, the way the city evolves is it starts where two major roads meet, um, and it picks that intersection point. If you think about cities over time, they kind of evolve over maybe often a trade route or for some reason you have a road that leads to the city, a main road at least. And then oftentimes a second road will, will evolve out of that if it, if it wasn't there in the first place. So we use that as our center point for the city and then we kind of evolve from, from that point. Um, so it creates the road network and then it creates all the buildings, adds the buildings to the map and then it adds some vegetation. Um, and the cool thing about this is everything is editable. Um, over here on the side, we've got our tabs for styled lines or custom lines. And so we can select a line and we can say, well, you know, maybe for some reason I don't like this line over here. I can delete it or I can change the points if I wanted to. Um, we can go down to shapes and this is where we can edit our, our river that's going through there. Or if we had a harbor, in this case the map wasn't generated with a harbor, uh, or a coastline, we could add it or edit it with the shapes. Here we can add styled text to the map to do labels and so forth. And if you have a one-off kind of piece of text that you want to do, you can do that here with the custom text. Finally, we've got our map items, and this allows us to go ahead and add a new thing to the map. So if we wanted to have another um, is this an armor or blacksmith, if you hover over for briefly, you'll see the tooltip, and that tells you what it is. So there we've got an armor, and if we wanted to place our armor over here, we can do that. The cool thing is uh, all the details for all these buildings are also spelled out. If we click View Edit Note here, we'll go ahead. We'll see all these little uh, squares, yellow squares, on top of all the buildings. They're actually one size, and when it's zoomed out like that, it covers the whole building. But typically, if you zoom in a little bit, you'll see it. Um, you'll be able to see the building underneath that little rectangle. And we can click any of them, and we can get the details. So this is our purse maker, and there's just one person there working. But we can actually head over. Let me zoom out, and let me find that armor. What we can do is we can select armor, and only the armor will be displayed on, on our map. And if he's not there, let's zoom out. There he is. So we found our armor, and now we can see what his, what's his price list. Uh, we have a room for a description. This will be randomly auto-generated as well in the near future. Um, but for right now, you can enter one. We have our staff, so we have an owner and a couple of apprentices. And we have uh, a number of, of suits of armor available as well. 
So that's all very powerful. I mean, you, your, your party can be saying, hey, what's that dot on the map over there? What's that town? And you can generate one almost instantly. I mean, you saw it was really just a couple of minutes here. Um, so with that out of the way, I'm going to switch to creating a new map in a step-by-step -step process. We'll see that in a moment. So here we are back at the, at the start screen, if you will, and we're going to do the step-by-step -step process to create a new map. And we'll go ahead and say, well, we'll crank this up a little bit. So we'll have kind of what's a, a very large town or a very, very small city with 15,000. Uh, we can go more. I wouldn't go into the into the millions, but of course that wouldn't be typical. But, um, uh, you know, you could go into the several tens of thousands at the very least and probably even go higher. Here in the... Um, uh, Here's our same information for setting up a map uh, as far as the size goes. And then here's our overrides. The other selectors that were on the initial screen for doing it in one step are not here because we'll be doing that we'll be setting those settings and more as we go. So now it's just going to create a base map that's essentially blank um, and the user interface for that. And once we once we see that, we can go up to the uh, what's the new generate menu, and we can generate things in a step by step process. So here we have that. We're going to zoom out a little bit because I just think that um, working with the city, I like to do a top down approach. So this will give us uh, the the largest zoomed out uh, level that we have. We can go to generate here, as I mentioned, and if we want to have a harbor or a coastline of any type, we click that, and we can set the number of degrees that we want it to start and the number of degrees that we want it to end. Um, so we can set that, generate, and now you see the coastline that, that's been created. Um, our other map already had a river, so I'm going to move down to highways. And here's a way, in this case, we're selecting things based on the positions of a clock. Uh, I'm going to keep it all random. And as I was mentioning before, you know, we've got two cities that cross. If you didn't want to do that, you could actually delete one of these lines and then have just a very small highway. You can use the highway here. If you hover over this, you can see which of these buttons is, a, is the highway. Um, and you can click a little mini highway that just crosses the, the other highway at one point and that could serve as, as your city center. After we've got that, we want to generate a wall if our city is going to have a wall. So we will. And I want it to be a complete wall all around the city. There's a slight chance that it will be irregular. And then setting a distance from the intersection. So we'll say, I'm going to go a little bit higher on that. These are all randomly generated each time we pop up that window. We'll generate that. And so there's our wall around the city, so there must be something unusual about, you know, the ground over here that caused us to not have a tower there. If we wanted to, we could add a tower. And that's no biggie. We can put one inside of there. Um, just, yeah. Um, and the next step is to do our streets. I like having a haphazard layout to my streets, especially if um, I have a road, uh, the highways are, are kind of jaggedy. Um, in the software you can set the highways to be much straighter when you create them and um, in that case then having a more planned layout makes more sense. Uh, I'm going to actually crank up the number of longer streets that we have here as well as the number of shorter streets um, and then generate. And so we've got a nice organic looking city. Uh, I see one kind of problem here with the road there. So I'll select this and I'll click here. Try to get, there's that line, delete that one. And you know, I want to keep this demo short, but you get the idea. We could, we can always edit everything about the map. I could add that other tower here, uh, but I want to keep the demo short here. Next up is buildings, and this is going to populate a large window with a grid uh, which has uh, pre-populated information about the number of buildings for a town of the size that we set. The number of buildings is all based on the population that we picked. We picked 15,000, um, so the, you know, the, the medieval demographic online will tell us, uh, there's several websites about that in, with, with that sort of data, 
And so um, looking at a few of them, the, they average out to having, you know, say one saddler for every th thousand people. So he had 15,000 or 15 building, 15 of those buildings in a population, in a city with a population size of 15,000. Um, down here on the bottom, we have uh, our regular houses. And so this is kind of the balance, if you will, the population that we chose. Um, say five or six people per building and divide things out and we end up with this many additional houses that are needed to, to fit that to, to match the population that we chose. So we generate and that's going to start putting things on there and so we got our we got a little castle there actually and we got a cathedral and we've got a number of others and it's just filling in nicely. Um, so again, you know, throughout this whole process, we can go ahead and, you know, see, you know, where are the barbers, and now only the barbers show up, and so we can click on there. Uh, oh, so I must have clicked close to something else. Let me zoom in a bit. And as we zoom in, so now if I click here, you know, we get a barber. We can see and that's the prices for a haircut and shave and so forth, as well as here's the barber and two assistants as uh, two assistants and uh, you know again I want to keep this demo short so I think I've covered all the main bases as we go through here we're seeing it add more and more buildings to the city um, we get to a point where oops, can't zoom out any further than that but we get to a point where it's um, all of the streets are, are used up and it's going to start bailing out of adding more buildings. It's going to place as many as it can and it will bail out and then we could actually add more streets if we wanted to. And then once we add those additional streets we could add additional buildings if we needed to. The final step, there we are, now we're done. So the final step would be to do vegetation. That's the same sort of thing as, as doing the buildings. Uh, I'm going to cut that out of, the, out of this little uh, overview but that certainly covers all the bases. So I want to thank you for uh, your support with the project. Um, by all means, go ahead and you can email me at support at inkwellideas.com or you can check out the forums that we have, which are inkwellideas.com slash forums. If they're not, you know, it should be also linked from the Inkwell Ideas page as well as from the Cityographer pages and, and everything else. Um, again, thank you very much.